Hi everybody, welcome back to Factorio, now episode 42. And as you can tell between episodes, I was able to get my banner up and working. So it now displays the Poobers server as I had in my point .16 series. So I'm really thrilled about that. It was just a matter of having a couple different wires that were not hooked in properly. So that is done, but that leaves an even bigger project that I'm having more daunting feelings about, which is oil, which is really the biggest bottleneck we're having right now, because if we can get oil up and running, that would mean we could technically get circuits kind of turned on here, at least for red circuits, which means we can use red circuits to further supply modules, which further means we can use modules to supply the bigger factories that we're still having yet to install for rocket fuel, low density structures, and of course the oil build itself. So stay tuned, we're gonna head over to the creative mode first, to start working on oil. I have been dreading and putting off doing an oil factory for so long. I've been procrastinating, trying to come up with other projects and different factories to work on throughout the base, but I really can't avoid it any longer. But I think looking here at my 0.16 blueprint for my oil build, you can see one of the reasons why I would have been dreading it because this took me hours upon hours to do. It's just one humongous build. It took up tons of FPS and UPS from my 0.16 map. It's very complicated. It's large. There was just so much to manage between fluids and pipes and let alone up here I had different sections for coal liquefaction, my acid build, and then there were over 100 refineries used, let alone all of the chemical plants used for the actual advanced oil processing and converting the different fluids into the other fluids. So I wanted to try and avoid such a messy build this time around. So I think the first thing we can do is start looking at the calculator for some inspiration on how I might avoid this huge mess this time around. Okay, we're back in the Kirk McDonald calculator, which is still my favorite one to use. I believe it is the correct updated patch, so this should be accurate. You can see I have my sciences set up here for production of 1000 per minute. I have productivity modules used where I can in assemblers, and I have max beacons around uh, my factory for the most part, which usually is 12. There's a couple exceptions for like the actual rocket or for refineries and such like that. Um, but if we assume that there's about 12 beacons around each entity or assembler, what have you, plus uh, multiplying that by usually two speed modules in each one, we come up with an entity of 24, which is why I get uh, this multiplier here. But let's actually look down at uh, plastic for starters. So to run the entire 1000 science per minute uh, at you know max rate or whatever, it's suggesting that I will need a production of 16,252 plastic per minute, which should be 16 chemical plants producing that. So we're gonna click this tab here because this will further break down um, how we go about making that plastic as an example. So for 16,252 plastic per minute, um, that means we need 125,000, give or take, petroleum produced per minute. And it's recommending we do basically 11 refineries. Uh, and this of course is only at 24 entities here, but I think we can do 16 beacons around times. So 16 times two, that would be 32. So we could technically maybe get away with only nine if we round up refineries for doing advanced oil processing. That also means we need, again, rounding up four chemical plants for converting the uh, heavy oil into light oil. And then from there, the 13 chemical plants from the light oil back into petroleum. So you can see here that it's slowly beginning to get a little bit more complicated. And that's exactly what I want to try and avoid this time around. Um, even though I said that one goal of this series was to have it as smart in addition to as efficient as possible. Um, I think one of the smarter things we can do for oil is to simplify it. So, um, what I'm thinking is that because of the most recent 0.17 oil and recipe changes, one thing I can possibly look at is instead of doing um, advanced oil processing and worrying about um, combining or um, kind of managing all of these separate fluids that I won't need for plastic purposes, so like heavy oil and light oil, that maybe we just stick with 
simple oil processing. So uh, the nice thing about just regular simple oil processing is that um, you basically take straight crude oil and it converts it into petroleum without the excess fluids. Um, the downside to that is that it's not the most efficient way to use crude oil. Um, I think you get slightly less. We'll have to look at the numbers when we're actually back in the game. Um, but the advantage is that you don't have to worry about handling the miscellaneous fluids that you don't even need anyway. You can save room without needing the excess chemical plants and the beacons that would be going around those chemical plants. So that's what I'm thinking. So for the parts where we will only need plastic, in particular what I'm thinking for red circuits that will be going into as well blue circuits, uh, we should just look at maybe some simple oil processing. Um, I know some of you guys might think that that's maybe a crazy idea, but I really wanna just make this as clean and simple as possible, um, especially with me trying to keep in mind that my oil builds will be in different areas around the base. And if I can have my oil refinery sections kind of in incorporated into the builds of red and blue circuits in particular, then I don't have to worry about the throughput lacking when I uh, try to get pipes uh, from one side of the base to the other. So that's another reason for doing it. Uh, but that's kind of all talk and speculation for now. Of course, we actually have to think about what this might look like in practice. So uh, this number here, 16,252 per minute, um, incorporates the entire plastic throughout um, for all 1,000 signs per minute. Uh, so what we need to do is actually um, add up the plastic requirements for just red and blue circuits because that will be slightly less than this number I would imagine. So let's find the correct calculator here. Um, okay, so this is for blue circuits uh, that will support uh, 1,000 signs per minute. So for blue circuits, we need 2,200, I'm gonna round it up to 18. So let's do 2,218 plus uh, the other one, we need 10,794, again, running up for um, supplying the red circuits. So 10,794. And there we get our new number of 13,012 plastic per minute if we wanna try to incorporate just basically producing plastic on site near red and blue circuits in the regular vanilla map where if you remember, I have it in my upper left circle. So I think we should definitely have room for this uh, if we try to keep in mind that there was plenty of room above the blue circuit areas. Um, another thing I need to consider though is do I wanna break down this number even further or do I wanna keep it all production of 13,000 plastic per minute or do I wanna break it up so that I have one factory for production of plastic going into red circuits and the other um, production solely going into blue circuits. That's something we can worry about later. So um, I guess let's go back over to the creative mode. We're gonna worry about, um, at this point, just coming up with an oil build to solely produce plastic. Uh, and then we can start worrying about from there the little intricacies of how we divide it up between the factories. Looking here at my blue circuit build, I'm actually tempted to see if we can break down that number of plastic into a smaller kind of direct insertion method of getting into the blue circuit factory here. Instead of having one large plastic factory or at least a bigger plastic factory, we'll basically do as direct insertion from refinery to blue circuits as possible. So one thing to keep in mind is that I am gonna be using two factories. So basically uh, this factory will be stamped twice to go into blue circuits. So I can take the plastic requirement, which was again, 2200 per minute and divide that by two because I'm gonna be needing basically half going into one factory and half of that going into another. So for this factory alone, I'm gonna be needing closer to 1100 plastic per minute. And I believe in terms of petroleum rate. Let's go ahead and take a look over at the calculator yet again. We're going to be needing to keep up with uh, 17,055, again running up for the entire two blue circuit builds, but we can again divide this number by two and we're ending up needing closer to about 8,500 petroleum per minute. So that's kind of the number that we have to shoot for and I think that gives me a good idea of where to start in terms of 
how many refineries and so on. So let's plop down the refinery and we're gonna place down the 16 beacons that go around it. And one nice thing about the refineries is that it goes around very evenly. And then I'm sorry if I've lost some of you with all of the numbers and calculations I'm talking about this time around, but uh, I don't wanna just skimp over this because this is the information that I know I would have appreciated watching other people because I don't always understand the reasoning for why they do stuff or how they end up calculating the stuff they do. So I wanted to just walk you through it very specifically about how I'm actually planning this. Uh, so the next thing I'm looking for are the productivity modules. There we have a very simple uh, kind of standard oil refinery build. Um, one thing I want to keep in mind, I suppose, is uh, I might be able to get away with using fewer beacons, but making it more compact, but I may have to use like one more additional refinery. Um, but that's fine by me. Let's see if we can do something like this for now. So we cut off almost like a, a row or a couple tiles worth of the beacons there. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting down belt because what I actually need is pipe. So pipe there. We'll do the fluid source here to signify the crude oil that will be coming in. And again, we're gonna be setting this to basic oil processing. Uh, we'll put the productivity modules back in. And we don't have to worry about the miscellaneous products, which is actually super nice. So, uh, we'll duplicate this now. I'm guessing we'll need anywhere from like two to four of these refineries. So actually not very much, which is really nice. And let's give it a uh, power. Let's put down something here in the middle. Looks nice to me. And there we go, it's already working. Um, so the best way to actually test the production is to um, let this run. We'll uh, duplicate that. There we go. Okay, so now it will be running. Uh, I don't necessarily trust the calculator to give me a good um, calculation of what to do for this because again the calculator was giving me advanced oil processing techniques to come up with the petroleum production but I'm again using basic oil processing. So what we're doing instead is going to be just looking at our graph here. I'm going to let it run for a full minute but it looks like just off of the five second interval I'm running about 10,000 ish per minute and again I only needed about 8,500 to keep up with just one half of my blue circuit requirements. So that might be enough to keep up with my plastic needs. So um, again, for plastic, for just this half of the blue circuit uh, requirements, we need about 1,100 plastic per minute. So let's grab a chemical plant if I can find it. There we go. Let's plop that down there. And this time around, we're gonna do 12 beacons around the entire thing. We might have to make this like slightly off center or something, which I hate to do, as you guys know, because uh, that's what happens when you have a little bit of OCD. Uh, okay, it's getting full coverage, it looks like. We'll put that there. Um, We'll do some regular pipe like that. We need some power right there. We need the modules to go in here, the productivity modules to go in there, the recipe. And then we do need to worry about how we get coal. Um, let's just, I mean, I guess we could use bots to supply it, but then I have to worry about having its own private bot network to feed from the um, like basically passive provider boxes or like wherever I have the car unloading. So let's keep it belt based at least for now. Um, I can't imagine that we have to worry about like a huge amount of coal, uh, but we'll do a matter thing there. I 
And then let's put in the coal thingy up here. I'm not sure if we'll need an entire full blue belt, but we'll start with half for now. Uh, and then let's worry about the output. So we can't do two inserters there or else the coal will mix, but we can put a couple inserters there because I'm imagining we'll need a couple different inserters just to keep up. Uh, but that looks good to me like that. And we'll do the matter void there. And then we just need power. And then of course to hook this in over here. So this is just a uh, kind of like a trial run to see if we can keep up with about 1100 plastic per minute. So currently, wow. We almost are getting away with 1100 per minute with just the one assembler, or excuse me, the one chemical plant for now. I don't think we can get away with that though. Um, so it looks like we probably need at least two of these guys. So let's copy that there. Uh, what we can do is put a splitter up here uh, for kind of demonstrating how in the real version of the game will have something like this set up. Wow, this was much easier than I anticipated. Uh, we're probably going to be significantly overproducing plastic um, with this setup, but I'd rather, again, overproduce than underproduce. I say that so much. Uh, but what are we at now? We're at about 2,000 per minute. I am going to let this run for a full minute here. Uh, but where are we at for production of petroleum? We're at 10,000 per minute still, um, which is overproduction as well. So I'm really pleased with the setup. Um, it looks like we literally just need two refineries to two chemical plants, and that will supply um, each one of my blue circuit builds. So basically we'll have two versions of everything I am circling here, uh, and that will be blue circuits covered. So uh, the next thing I want to do, in addition to just kind of letting this run and making sure that my ratios are correct and that um, it still works over a decent length of time, um, is to kind of get this set up a little bit more cleanly. It's not gonna look exactly like this. I do wanna have it look a little bit more pretty than how we're showcasing it right now. So I'll clean that up a little bit um, off camera here. We'll come up with a better layout for everything and then we'll start worrying about the bigger plastic build that we'll anticipate needing for red circuits alone. Well, it's been a couple minutes later. I've reorganized kind of how I have the refineries and the plastic set up, but it might technically end up looking like something similar to this, if not exactly the same once it's actually installed in the vanilla map. Uh, what I have here is kind of a little bit off center. I know it's not symmetrical, but the reason for that is because we have to remember that this setup will be in the circle and the circle shape will kind of be coming around like this where my arrow is drawing. So that's why I will have definitely more room up here to the top right versus over here at the end. Uh, but another thing to keep in mind is that I did forget about the petroleum that we'll need for acid, but I think that will be really easy to solve. We can either add another refinery here or we might be producing enough where we can just add a couple extra pipes in and add an ex another couple chemical plants in for production of the acid. So I'm not too worried about that. I think we'll worry about that a little bit later. I still do wanna continue on with planning the overall um, oil refinery to plastic to red circuit portion now. Uh, so I think apart from acid, blue circuits is at least a little bit more well on its way than we started out with. So let's leave this here for now. And I'm not worried about there being too little plastic production. As you can see, it is backed up and it's keeping up with the uh, correct ratios and everything. So that works out just fine. In terms of a separate build solely for red circuits though, our rate that we're now gonna be aiming for is a little bit less. So because we're getting rid of the 2200 plastic that is only going into blue circuits. We're now looking at a number of about, I think 10,700 or so plastic per minute. And all of that will be going specifically into my red circuit build. So um, I don't think we can use the same build that I used here for the uh, plastic going into blue circuits because 
Uh, we'll have to probably make it a little bit wider or something because we can't have, unless I want to do some belt braiding, uh, this setup won't work. So let's uh, still copy it though for the sake of, you know, experimenting. We'll have a little bit of an open area over here. Uh, let's add some power right off the bat because I hate the blinking. Um, okay, so about 10,700 per minute is the new rate we're gonna be trying to keep up with. Uh, does this work? Yeah, I really don't think we can uh, get away with something like this. So let's make it a little bit wider and we're gonna do that by giving it still the same amount of beacon coverage. We're just moving it over by a tile, uh, which is kind of a cool trick. Adding in those there, we'll move that, but now we have a little bit more room to work with and we can technically change possibly the locations and the orientation of the chemical plant here so we can move it around um, with the inputs there as an example or you know, there's, there's different ways we can do it. We've got to keep that there for max coverage. Hmm, maybe we can run coal through the top like so. We'll have that feed into the refineries, which I can copy, I think, at least one of them from there. Okay, so refinery copied. We'll give that power as well. Get rid of all of the trees that are in the way. There we are. And we'll give it some petroleum like that. Okay, so coal, like I said, we'll imagine coming from the top, I'm thinking. We can cap that off. We can use a box so it just has a little bit more um, easy of a time getting the coal transferred in here. That means we have to get rid of that. We can even do both sides. I think he... Yeah, we can't do it longer than that though. Okay, so that will work for coal, I think. We'll do a matter source here to represent the coal, like that for now. And then we can do that for the plastic output. We'll probably wanna balance it though. So let's see if we can maybe get away with only two inserters outputting it. Uh, we, that means we may have to end up with more chemical plants, but that's fine. So I'm thinking something like that. Hmm, that looks good to me. And then I'm trying to imagine for tileability purposes, you know, where the lights go and where the additional underground belts and stuff go like that. But let's copy this a few times. I'm not sure how many we need. But again, the rate we're looking for is just under 11,000 per minute. So let's start with maybe one more tile. So there's six columns total. And then are we able to duplicate this and make several different rows is the question. Because it is important to be tileable, which looks like it's tiling well. So let's do um, a six by four, which would be 24 chemical plants. Uh, I suppose I could look at the calculator, but too late for that. We're already here. Uh, oh, I'm forgetting power though. Where does the power go? Easy, it goes right there. Almost like I planned it, which I didn't. I just lucked out. Uh, there, 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 and there. And we'll need it at the end for the outlier beacons. And then we'll put it here in the middle as well, just for the sake of uniformity. Oh, it's already working. Okay, so let's put in uh, the matter voids just to start doing the testing. And then if we have to add more rows or more columns, we will. And then I'm sure we'll have to as well add more, um, I'm missing more pipes. Oh, and I'm not thinking about how these pipes join up. Hmm, okay. I didn't think of that 
very well, did I? Okay, at least it joins up like this, it looks like. We'll just have to have a separate, like connect this up here. Like so. There. Whoops. Like that. There we go. And then I'll fix the other sides or the other columns here in just a second. Um. Hmm, okay, we're definitely not getting enough petroleum from here, which isn't a surprise because this is only one refinery trying to supply everything. So now we're gonna duplicate this, I don't know how many times. Again, I should probably look over at the calculator, uh, but you know, it's just easier sometimes just to keep doing this and trial and error sometimes. Although um, I say that it's easier, but it's probably not. Okay, so there's four for now. Uh, let's see. Are they all working? Yes, okay. So time to fix the pipes. In fact, um, let's just delete from here on over. We'll copy this. Okay. Uh, oh, we're missing. Shoot. Now we have to copy this. All right. I think all pipes are now installed. Oh, of course, we're now missing the coal portion. This is what happens when you half-ass everything. You end up with little things you're missing. Okay, so now theoretically this will start fully turning on in terms of how much it's turned on will be, I'm thinking, just how far behind we are with the actual petroleum production. So, we will need definitely way more than four refineries. Um, let's see if we can get away with doing uh, maybe a couple different rows. And then, ooh, maybe we can do like one row of refineries into each row of plastic that I have. That's an option. Um, or we can just have it all go into one pipe system as long as we can maintain the throughput. Uh, so how do we get oil, crude oil that is, to the other portions of these refineries now. That's going to be the tricky part. Hmm. Let's just keep playing with it. There we go. All right, we have a little bit of wiggle room here, so we can do, let's see, where is it coming through? Here we go, we just found how to get uh, the second row's worth of crude oil. That goes there. As far as this row down here, uh, we have a little bit of room right here next to the power pole. Shoot, but I think that... Um, how do I get... Oh, shoot. I guess that has to go. Okay. There we go. That will go there. Oh, I am stuck. There. There. And there. Awesome. So let's get rid of these other ones and we'll just copy this one thing and duplicate it a couple different times.
Perfect. And giving that power, we'll see all of these guys turn on. Plastic is running sometimes. Uh, I don't think we've got like a huge amount of, like we don't have too much petroleum um, flooding the pipes. So uh, I don't think that's the issue. How much are we producing at this point? Okay, 70,000. I think we need closer to 100,000. So I think I have to play with these ratios a little bit here. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a look again at the calculator. Uh, but we've talked about the calculator so much this episode. I'm gonna do this rest of it off camera here and I'll show you guys what the final ratios end up being in just a second. Well, after looking at the calculator again and doing some testing and checking the ratios, this is gonna be the final build for the about 10,000 plus plastic that we're gonna need per minute. And keep in mind that is only to supply red circuits. So essentially, if there was a way to fit this to directly insert into the red circuit factory I have built already in the vanilla map, I would. I think this is gonna have to go elsewhere because there's already basically no more room left over in that lower left quadrant where the red circuits are going. So this will go somewhere else, but at least we know that with how this is set up, the ratios work, the amount of refineries works, um, any less, I can't quite keep up with the petroleum that I need. And then any fewer plastic chemical plants, I'm not quite keeping up with the amount of plastic rate that I need, which is according to the calculator, I'm needing 10,793 per minute. And the calculator shows me that I'm producing 10,000 if we're looking over the one minute graph. So I don't know the exact number, but again, looking at the calculator, in other words, it also says I need four fully compressed blue belts, which is what we're getting if we look here. So this I'm calling good. I, we've got a couple different outliers every once in a while where there's not 100% compression, but this is close enough for me. So I'm considering plastic done, at least in terms of red circuits and blue circuits. For any additional plastic that we end up using throughout the base, like any just random plastic that goes into science as an example, or uh, plastic that goes into red circuits that we eventually use for modules and stuff like that, we can essentially just uh, make smaller versions of these components here, basically from uh, direct crude oil into refineries into uh, therefore petroleum and plastic that goes elsewhere. So that really leaves acid as the last thing to play with. And um, I did take away this power source um, because I wanted to see how much I was producing for petroleum just independent to this section up here. So let's now turn off this section since plastic I'm considering good to go. And then just to kind of review uh, the amount of stuff I used, um, I did end up going with 12 chemical plants for plastic, I think technically for the calculator, um, I only needed 11, but, but 12 is better for symmetry purposes and for um, making it easier to distribute the fluids more evenly. Um, and then in terms of how many refineries I went with, um, I did go with 18 or a six by three setup here, uh, which is still pretty compact considering that we saved room on eating additional chemical plants and beacons and whatnot uh, going into uh, advanced oil processing setups. So now back to acid. This is really like the last thing we have to do to get at least these primary petroleum using uh, resources out of the way. Uh, let's see, do I have a glimpse of what I did over here? I do. So this again is my 0 0.16 series setup and I really liked it. So let's just make a copy of it uh, here. There we go. We'll plop it down. Oh, right here for starters, just to make it easy. Uh, we will need water um, and we'll need additional iron plate coming in here, but that shouldn't be too much of a big deal. And then what I think I'll do is kind of see if I can scoot everything over. Um, if not, we may be able to fit the acid setup like underneath the blue circuit setup. We'll have to see how much room we have to, left over. Um, okay, so water. 
we'll have coming from there somewhere. We have a car in the middle, like that. And I'll put in some filters, I think, there eventually. No point doing it right now. Uh, and this is just kind of one tile of the acid, so the last thing we need. Actually, let's do um, the box trick, so we're gonna change it up a little bit. And then we'll do a source for the iron plate coming in here. Uh, we could, again, also do it via bot supply, but then, like I said earlier, I'd have to worry about having its own private logistic network, which I don't wanna worry about right now. Um, okay, so as far as the petroleum goes, let's see. Let's refer back to the calculators and pull that over here real quick. Here we are looking again at blue circuits. Now we're gonna look at acid. Okay, so for acid, we need 3,800, give or take, to keep up with uh, blue circuits. We're gonna divide that number again by two because we're splitting our blue circuit builds in half. So 3,880 divided by two, and we get 1,940 for the acid production that we need to keep up with. So that means we just need about um, less than 2,000 additional petroleum per minute to keep up with the half of the amount of acid that we need here. So let's add in maybe another um, single refinery and we'll see if that works. Um, I'm gonna have to move everything over. Um, so instead, let's move this over first and then I'll worry about prettifying it later. We'll move that car, put that there, put that there for now. Let's add in an extra one of these there for us. Hook that in there. And then uh, we can have basically splitting off a little bit of the outputs for the petroleum. And the petroleum goes into the acid over here, or the sulfur over here. And I don't think this is how I'm gonna have it in the actual map. Uh, we'll make it a little bit prettier, of course, like I always do. We'll change, you know, exactly where the pipes are located. Um, but this is more just for testing purposes at the exact moment here. Uh, so it's already turned on. Where's the output? Right here. And then we'll put this into a void fluid thingy here uh, for testing purposes. Let's see if we have any f acid getting produced on the map. I don't think that is right. I wonder if it's counting this in. Okay, let's see. Okay. Uh, unless we have acid getting produced elsewhere on the map, is this actually accurate? Let's see, according to the calculator, I guess technically it says that we would only need 0.2 of a, a chemical plant to go into actually producing the acid. Basically same ratio with the sulfur. So that seems about right, I guess. Uh, yeah, this might actually be all we need for our acid production. So um, to fully test this, what we're gonna do, um, let's add a tank right here. Uh, the numbers I'm just kind of doubting because it just looks so like I should be requiring so much more, but We'll actually know for sure when we uh, hook this into the blue circuits. Uh, if I can get them over here somehow. We'll copy. Uh, actually, what I'll do, let's do that and then like so. There we go. All right, so the question will be whether the blue circuits can maintain the same rate it was prior. I think it was doing just about a thousand per minute. So again, I will let this run for just a couple minutes here. 
I'll probably reorganize everything and then I'll be back once we have the finished product and the finished ratios. All right, here's the finished setup of oil that feeds directly into blue circuits. We've got plastic over here to the top left, again, only requiring two chemical plants for the entire thing. I've got three refineries here in the middle, surrounded by, I think it's 12 beacons with speed modules on each beacon, of course. And then over here to the right of the refineries, we have the acid build. Also just a one chemical plant per acid and another one for the sulfur that goes into it. And even then that's overproducing. I have that going into a tank just for um, storing the surplus. So we always have it on hand just in case it were to get behind a little bit. Uh, but there we go. The only thing I'm remotely worried about is fitting in the subsequent belts going into copper and iron plate over here. But apart from that, plastic is very clearly keeping up. Acid is keeping up with all of the uh, assemblers going into blue circuit production. So ultimately, I'm really happy with this. So how this is gonna look in the actual vanilla map once we get it installed, uh, we'll have something looking basically just like this, if not exactly like this um, in the upper left quadrant, uh, just like I have laid out here in this mock ghosted in circle. And then on the right hand side, uh, I plan on basically just using uh, like an app or um, some Foreman mod or something like that to basically just mirror the blueprint so um, it'll be basically symmetrical um, on this side compared to the right upper quadrant over here. So it should look pretty good, I would think. But between the oil products needed for blue circuits and then of course our bigger plastic build that we're gonna be using for red circuits, I think we're gonna be calling this an episode. It was pretty successful. Now that just leaves some leftover fluids like lube and uh, the light oil that we'll be needing to go into rocket fuel and um, you know solid fuel before that, of course but we'll leave that for the next time. So let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments down below and I'll plan on seeing you guys next time.